Welcome to Chemical Reactor Design. Today we're gonna finalize example 8.5 where we're gonna do both cases 4 and 5. Okay, so far we have done three cases and today we're gonna do case 4. In case 4, the heat exchanger in case 3 now has a variable Ta, ambient temperature. The reactant and the heating medium flow in the same direction. Of course, you have all the information in the last two cases, which is case 5 and 4. Uh, we have air, Cp air is given, 34.5 joule per mole per kelvin. At a rate of 0.11 mole per second per tube with Ta0, 1250 kelvin, is available for heating. So we have the air available and the temperature of the air is this much. Tamam. And case 4, Ta is variable. So that means, actually in both cases, 4 and 5, we have Ta is variable. That means it's available at 1250, but then it will lose it heat, its heat to the reaction mixture, to the reactor, which means its temperature will drop. Okay, the other specifications are also known. Five. So what we're going to do in this case? Well, everything is same as case three, except that here T A does not equal 1250. Remember, we, we, we wrote that in case three. Tamam. However, but so what's our equation for T A then? Well, we have a differential equation for T A. And since it's a co-current, then we use this equation dt a by dv equals u a t minus t a divided by well we have here not the mass flow rate of the heating medium but we have the molar flow rate of air come on uh, multiply by cp of air okay so let's frame this equation because we're going to need it and we also need to provide a initial condition so at at v equals to zero we know that t a equals of course t a naught right which equals 1250 kelvin so if you look at the reactor which is surrounded by the, the other tube here the reaction mixture is entering here from here and the heating medium entering from the same direction so at v equals to zero here the temperature of the heating medium is 1250 kelvin that's the only difference. So let's go ahead and press run after inserting this equation along with the initial condition. So this is how the profiles will look like. Let's look at the conversion. The conversion reaches a maximum value of 35% at the exit compared to the case where we had heat exchanger but TA was constant which was around 56 percent conversion tamam so why is that why we have lower conversion obviously the reason is that we have lower rate of reaction lower rate of reaction compared to the previous case why the rate of reaction is lower because the temperature is decreasing as you can see the temperature is decreasing to so start at 1030 right or was it 135 sorry it was 1035 kelvin and it's decreasing why is it decreasing well in order to explain this we have to look at the localized heat generated and the localized heat removed right so let's go there and look at them so here we are plotting the localized heat absorbed in blue 
and Tiffin blue and the localized heat transferred okay that is in black so you can see throughout the reactor throughout the reactor the localized heat transferred is lower than the localized heat absorbed so the localized the, the heat that is absorbed by the reaction mixture for the reaction is always more than the rate at which heat was transferred to the reactor therefore obviously the temperature will drop so at and, and at all the locations at any location in the reactor you have the amount of heat or the rate at which heat is absorbed by the reaction mixture per unit volume is more than what we are supplying the rate at which heat is supplied to the reactor therefore the temperature will drop now the reason one should ask why why the localized heat transfer is always lowered why heat is transferred at the rate that is lower than the localized heat absorbed by the reaction well the reason is we have in this case ta is variable ta is variable it enters the react the side of the reactor tamam or surround the annulus that is surrounding the reactor it enters at 1250 however because it's supplying its heat to the reaction mixture it will lose its heat content its energy content therefore the temperature will drop and once it loses temperature as you can see the driving force the driving force the delta t for the heat transfer is decreasing tamam so the trend is the same both the localized heat absorbed and the localized heat transfer their trends are the same it's they are decreasing as the as you go down the length of the reactor why is that well the localized heat absorbed is decreasing because the rate is decreasing because the temperature is decreasing and the concentration is decreasing and the localized heat transferred is also decreasing because the delta t is decreasing the driving force for the heat transfer is decreasing why is that because as we go down the length of the reactor t is dramatically decreasing because the heating medium is losing its heat to the reaction mixture so as a driving force as a temperature gradient decreases the rate at which heat is transferred is decreasing as well tamam so therefore the temperature decreases causing that to have a rate that is lower compared to the rate of reaction and the previous case where ta was constant where ta was constant and therefore we are ending up with lower conversion tamam in general shabab you can say that the total heat absorbed by the reaction is more than the total heat transferred to the reactor and this is very obvious because you see that temperature is decreasing down the length of the reactor so let's try something more let's try to have a counter current flow well before we go to case five which is the counter current let me ask a couple of questions first question what can be done to keep ta constant so we are upset that ta is reducing correct because this will decrease the temperature gradient or temperature difference between the reactor and the heating need and the heat exchanger and therefore we lose the rate at which heat is transferred to the reactor and therefore the temperature inside the reactor will decrease so what can we do to keep ta constant any idea well if you need to keep the ta constant you have to increase the heat capacity of the heating medium how do you increase the heat capacity of the heating medium well we look at this cp air huh? times mole flow rate of air so well we cannot play with the cp of air but we can play with the molar flow rate of the air if we introduce the air the heating medium at higher rate this will increase the heat capacity of the heating medium and then no matter how much heat it's losing 
this will not affect its temperature much. Tamam. And one more question. Find if air needed to attain an isothermal operation. Interesting. So you saw that T is decreasing. Can I increase if a air to a, to a limit where the temperature inside the reactor remains constant? We're not talking about TA being constant. Now we're talking about T being constant. Can you do that? Please try it out. Okay, let's go to case five. Same as case four, but the reactant and the heating medium flow in opposite directions. Come on, and the same information is given. Type. What do we change? Well, we change only the energy balance for the heating medium. So now the equation for the counter current flow becomes dTA by dV equals U times A times TA minus T. There we had T minus TA. Here we have TA minus T. Come on. Divided by F air multiplied by CP. CP air. Okay. Come on. Frame it. What's our initial condition? Let's see what our initial condition is. At V equals to zero. What do you have at V equal to zero? Let's see. This is the reactor. Come on. And this is the heat exchanger. Okay. So at v equals to zero what do we have okay you know that the flow of the heat ex uh, sorry the flow of the reaction mixture is coming from at v equals to zero of course this is a reaction mixture entering the reactor at v equals to zero but the heat transfer fluid is coming from the opposite direction and I know that it's entering from the opposite direction where V equals V fine. And I know that its temperature is 1250 Kelvin because that's what's available, right? That's what, what's available. This is TA naught. This is the entering temperature of the heating medium. Tamam. So do we have, do we have TA? at volume zero do we have ta here do we have it well we don't have it right you can call it ta2 tamam but we don't have it right so ta equals ta2 at v equals to zero but we don't have it we don't know it well all that we know is that it must be lower than 1250 right because the heating medium is giving away its heat to the reaction mixture, but we don't know what the value is. So what do we do? What engineering has taught you in this situation? To give up, not to do anything, or to do some trial and error, right? So we can do trial and error. We can guess. We can guess the value of TA. We can guess the value of TA here, tamam, and then check out the value of TA here at the reactor exit of course it should be 1250 right if my guess was correct so let's do that okay so again just to write it here here the temperature is 1000 kelvin and ta2 is unknown we don't know ta2 okay so let's do some trial error okay so let's guess. Let's guess that at V equals to zero, TA equals 1100 Kelvin. Okay, again, Shabab, I know that the temp TA2, I know that TA2 should be less than TA naught, right? Should be less than 1250 Kelvin. Okay. I know that. Okay, so 
we assumed 1100 Kelvin and let's run the program and let's check the value of TA let's check the value of TA at the exit of the reactor at the exit of the reactor what's the value of T at the exit reactor 1657 Kelvin that is if we assume that TA equals 1100 Kelvin so that's a lot right that's way more than 1250 so that means my guess is wrong what should I guess more than 1100 Kelvin or less obviously less right obviously less so let's guess that TA to be 1100 Kelvin let's look at TA at the exit it's 1045 Kelvin that's too low I'm expecting 1250 so that means my guess was too low so my guess of 1100 Kelvin is too high because it's leading to a temperature that is higher than the actual temperature and my guess of, of 1000 is too low because it's leading to a very low temperature lower than 1250 Kelvin the actual temperature at the exit so my guess should be somewhere in between so let's guess somewhere around 1135.525 Kelvin and let's check what is the value of TA at the exit and voila it's exactly it exactly equals the actual temperature of the heating medium at the exit of the reactor where it's entering voila very lucky guess طيب let's look at the solution then طيب let's look at the conversion the conversion actually is lower than even the co-current flow 30% much lower than the 56% or 57% where we had TA constant right well why we had lower because an overall the rate of reaction is lower overall come on you can see that the rate of reaction is dropping very fast at the beginning why is this well because overall the temperature is lower come on the temperature is lower okay let's see let's see let's see what we have here we have very interesting profile for the rate very interesting distant profile for the rate let's explain it Bye. let's explain it well at the beginning of the reaction at the beginning of the reactor the rate of reaction is high right well you know what let's plot the localized heat transferred and localized heat absorbed so we can explain the temperature as well let's do that okay here we go localized heat absorbed and the localized heat transferred okay so at the beginning the rate is high because the concentration is high the temperature is high 1035 as you can see however it drops a lot the rate drops very fast why the rate drops very fast well we have two reasons first because the concentration drops second because the temperature drops as well the temperature drops why the temperature is dropping well let's see let's see why the temperature is dropping well first the localized heat absorbed is very high at the beginning because the rate of reaction is very high however on the other side the localized heat transferred is zero you see it's zero and it's then it's increasing but still it's very low why it's very low because the driving force for the heat transfer the delta t is very low why it's very low because this is the end of the heating medium that's the end of the heating medium right where it has lost already the majority of its heat or not the majority a lot of its heat i should say and therefore its temperature dropped to a value which is which equals that temperature of that or which is very close to the temperature of the reaction mixture so the delta t is very low therefore the localized heat transferred is very low so you have 
the reaction mixtures absorbing heat at a rate that is much faster than the rate which I'm supplying heat to the reactor. Therefore, the temperature will drop. Okay. So the temperature continues dropping. The temperature continues dropping. Okay. Because the localized heat absorbs more than the localized heat transferred. Let's look at the localized heat absorbed. The localized heat absorbed is decreasing. Why it is decreasing? Because the rate of reaction is decreasing. Why the localized heat transferred is increasing. Why is it increasing? Because the delta T, the temperature gradient, is increasing. Come on. Because as we go down the length of the reactor, you have T higher value of Ta. Until they are equal. Until they are equal. So here the temperature will stop dropping. Will stop dropping. Do you see, Shabab? Here the temperature will stop dropping. After this point, you have the localized heat absorbed is more than localized heat trans. Uh, uh, sorry, the localized heat, I should say. Sorry, I'll say it again. The oops. Yep. The localized heat transfer to the reactor is more than the localized heat absorbed by the reaction. Both they are increasing, Shabab. Be careful. Okay, both they are increasing, but the localized heat transferred to the reactor is more than the localized heat absorbed by the reaction. So you are transferring heat to the reactor at a rate which is faster than the rate at which reaction mixture is absorbing. So therefore they have excess energy inside the reactor so the temperature will increase as you can see here why the localized heat transfer is high because the driving force is increasing why is it increasing because i'm moving toward the exit of the reactor where the ta value is high okay, so it's still the heating medium it is in its beginning so it has a lot of heat energy so its temperature is high come on why the localized heat absorbed is large well this is because the rate of reaction starts to increase why is it increasing because the temperature started to increase and we explained why the temperature started to increase because that localized heat transfer to the reactor is more than the localized heat absorbed by the reaction come on so this is very interesting phenomena that we have here which we explained okay so out of the all cases out of all of these cases which case you're going to choose which case is the best well obviously it's the case where ta was constant come on so it's not even the isothermal, it's the case where we have heat exchanger where T is constant. So actually I managed to keep T A constant. Therefore, I was able to transfer good amount of heat to the reaction mixture in such a way that the T actually ended up higher. The T at the exit ended up higher than the T at the inlet. So toward the end where the rate was low due to the low concentration i managed to keep the rate not as low as it's used to be in the other cases because i have increased the temperature toward the end instead okay so now we know the effect of different cases or in operations the different oper effect of different operations and also we know what is the best operating case for this reaction okay with this we conclude example 85 with the five different cases and we'll meet soon with more topics and heat effects in reactors see you soon